Yes, so I was here to present data on a sub-analysis of patients that participated in the OPERA trials and then in the open label extension and we have data here for seven years. So basically the OPERA trials were the phase three trials in which ocrelizumab was compared against interferon in relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis and these OPERA trials, there were two of them, uh, enrolled patients with relapsing remitting MS. Of these patients, uh, part of them had uh, never been treated with DMTs, so were treatment naive and were uh, enrolled early in their disease course, so before two years. And we were interested in analyzing this subpopulation because in clinical practice we know that uh, we should treat patients with high efficacy drugs including ocrelizumab but many practitioners are afraid of using them because of safety concerns mainly. So our idea was to see what was the safety of ocrelizumab when, when used in this subpopulation in the long term. Okay, so we are still following these patients, we'll have more data in the future, but so far we analyzed the seven years. Uh, and from our population, so we gathered 668 patients, equally divided between those that started on interferon for the first two years and then switched to ocrelizumab for another set, five years, and those that started with ocrelizumab since the beginning and were for seven years doing ocrelizumab. Uh, these patients were, of course, uh, young, so their average age was 35 years. Uh, most of them um, were still in their uh, early disease, so the average uh, time since diagnosis was half a year, which is really short time, uh, and their mean EDSS was 2.5. So this is really a very initial, very low burden of disease population. We followed these patients and what we found was that regarding NIDA at seven years, rebaselining MRI at 24 weeks, so uh, six months, uh, we found 50% of patients in the ocrelizumab group had NIDA at seven years compared with only 28% of those patients that started interferon. And there was a significant difference in all NIDA parameters between the two groups uh, in all parameters except the confirmed disability progression. Although in confirmed disability progression, what we saw was that there was a higher probability of patients having confirmed disability progression if they were bef uh, first started with interferon and then switched to ocrelizumab, although this didn't reach statistical significance. This is in what regards efficacy. The most important results are regarding safety. So safety, uh, what we uh, found out was that we, we didn't see any increase in the rate of malignancies or serious infections throughout seven years. And the rate of serious infections and malignancies was um, similar to that of the overall ocrelizumab population, so no higher risk. And in the seven years, the, for instance, the risk of serious infections was always low. And we also studied the relationship of this risk of serious infections with uh, the decreased IgG levels. And in these patients in which uh, we recorded a uh, decreased IgG level, we found out that this was not associated uh, significantly with increased risk of serious infections. Okay, so the rate of serious infection in this patient population was similar to that of the population that never had low IgG levels. Uh, the, the, we recorded three serious infections in this specific population and the three specific uh, infections were common, so we, uh, upper and um, respiratory infections or nitrate infections, and they were easily manageable, although they were, uh, of course, uh, considered serious. So overall, what can we say? We can say that in this specific population followed for seven years and in which we had a very good retention rate of 70 percent, uh, the safety of ocrelizumab and of course its efficacy seemed very consistent with the, the overall population and um, I think we can say that it's safe to start these patients very early on based on this data with ocrelizumab.